albatross around the neck, no more like a millstone, a plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Heart of Horror. I am one of your two hosts for this show, Bo Ranstone. With me, as ever, is the the lovely, the talented, the effervescent <laughs> Kate Pollock. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. That is a really sweet and slightly overrated intro. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I'm all right. I have a bit of a cold, but apart from that, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. You're a little, a little stopped up. Yeah, so if I sound a bit nasally, let's just go with husky and sexy, not cold ridden. Yeah, I think sultry would be. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that's. Not, well, I don't have any choice in how I sound, but if we're going to describe it as anything, let's go with sultry. Well, Why not? And it fits the show. You right. Know? It, it does. Because this is, if nothing else, uh, a sexy show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're two very sexy people, honestly. I don't know how our audience can handle it, honestly. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I feel the same way. Um, even mm-hmm. without foul language, we just naturally get an explicit rating. <laughs> yeah, just from the like vibes that we are giving out through the sound waves. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of you know tumescence and <laughs> and moisture. <laughs> Oh, we lasted three episodes without saying, no, two episodes without saying the M word. <laughs> That's really too, too long. Yeah, well, fair enough. <laughs> I hate it so much. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know, I don't know why it's so universally hated. Apart from those sadists who say it just to make other people cringe. But I am one of these people that cringes. It's just, it's, it's just not even nice to say. It's just the way that your mouth makes moist. Oh, eh, uh, no, I don't like it. <laughs> so, but yes, we're that. <laughs> I mean, look, 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 if nothing else, this show is brutally honest. Are you one of those people that prefers wet? Is that your thing? Or do you have another term that you enjoy? <laughs> um, thinking back to uh, my sexting days. Um, yeah, I think that, yeah. Um, oh, oh. I mean, if we're going to be real explicit, like, if I was going to be, like, doing, if I was going to be describing things to someone, it would be, like, <laughs> it'd be, like, dripping or... <laughs> okay, sure. I feel so cringe saying it now. I was a lot younger then, and I didn't give up as much of a shit. Um, it was just whatever I thought that the person who I was speaking to was going to get most of a kick out of. But, yeah, if we can go with what. <laughs> yeah, you know, for guys, because, you know, I, look, we've all done that of, of or all adults, I assume, at some point or another have done the, the <laughs> sexy texting, a.k.a. sexting. Yeah, and, we're a hip there, though. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, you know, I, I like to make sure that we clearly define all the terms. Uh, that's the English major in me. But Yeah, just, just call us the Urban Dictionary, just because right. you know, we're that on trend <laughs> yeah oh no doubt but yeah right. but for guys it's real easy because hard is is both descriptive and not moist you know <laughs> yeah. like it doesn't sound as gross and you can throw some descriptors on that like hard as a rock or you know steel hard or whatever you can get rigid it. rigid is, is uh is not bad um i always uh liked achingly hard Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. Cuz that, that's cool. Yeah, right. That it, that lets you know like, you know, not only am I hard, I'm up to some business. Um, <laughs> are ready ready for some work. Yeah, right. Yeah, like I do you know what is so funny? I have not heard of this film we like this film is so innocent compared to this chat. Um the um the, yeah, the thing that I find hilarious now as someone who's a bit older and just kind of over the sexting thing, well, mostly anyway. Um, and uh, the <laughs> the thing that I used to do when I was younger is I would try and make it descriptive, <laughs> like I was writing erotic fiction. <laughs> and like, you know, I would really hate to use the same word twice <laughs> in the same text. <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just, hey, look, that's just considerate for the reader. Yeah, but like I don't really think they gave a fuck, you know. Like 
it's okay. You can use the word wet twice, you know, like, I don't think they're going to be like, whoa, well, okay, do you know what? That syntax was terrible. And talk about that grammar. You know, what? I'm just not interested. It's just a turn off, honestly, at this point. You know, like, I don't think they're really going to give a fuck. And here's me going, no, I need to do better. This is, you can't put that. That's terrible. It's terrible writing. <laughs> and, um, should I use pedals? Yeah, I guess I <laughs> lips. I was already like I've already burned that bridge. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, apex is a is a good one. Apex oh, is. apex is a good one. Yeah, yeah. it's I'll, kind of clinical. Yeah, I think there's there's something poetic about apex. You know, apex of the thighs. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I stole that one from uh, Fifty Shades. If I'm honest, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of the Henry James Delta. Oh, okay. I always thought that was a pretty good one. Um, uh huh. <laughs> you're right. I'm, I'm trying to think like, how do we wind our way back to, <laughs> to a world innocent, <laughs> innocent fairy tale gothic romance? Um, yeah. So <laughs> we're just gonna have to shoehorn. I think. Yeah. At this one. <laughs> Speaking of shoehorning, that's how we do it. We segue <laughs> oh. that way. Oh, smooth. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is kind of our Christmas episode, mm-hmm. and uh, there. Uh, so. It is hard both to find a Christmas horror movie that's not terrible. There there are a handful that are really good, but there's a lot of real garbage out there. Mm-hmm. And then also to find something that is, uh, you know, romantic in to yeah. some degree. Because, you know, maybe you can argue Gremlins. There is a romance <laughs> happening there, but also there are dead Santas and chimneys and... That, Unless you look at Gremlins 2, because you have, like, the hot chick one in Gremlins 2. Yeah, that's true. It, what is and, it? And, like, <laughs> the businessman. There's, like, an erotic fiction right there ready to happen. You're right. And I'm sure that somebody <laughs> has written that You know, somewhere. Like, yeah. On the underground, on the dark web, there, that's, that's where that lives. <laughs> oh, no. You just go to Amazon Kindle and you, <laughs> you just search for the keyword sexy gremlin. Oh yeah, or true. sexy Christmas gremlin. And that sounds like a vibrator, honestly. <laughs> oh, a sexy Christmas gremlin, yeah. Yeah, like some sort of cock ring vibrator or something, you know, like. Oh yeah, it'll jingle your bells. <laughs> <laughs> Just come in your stocking. <laughs> oh, oh, oh wow. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, so we're talking about... This is where we're at already. I just... Oh, okay. Yeah, it's uh, one of the upsides of the show, really. <laughs> and <laughs> a wag, a wet-ass gremlin. <laughs> yeah, nice. Anyway, uh, so we settled on um, Edward Scissorhands, which is kind of interesting because I just recently watched Batman Returns as well oh yeah another great christmas film yeah kind of christmasy and also gothic although not as romantic unless you know you're into fetish wear which i ain't against i mean yeah that's not kink shame here we're open (laughs) right if anything like (laughs) and and i I mean michelle pfeiffer hello i'm telling you that movie came out in what like 92 91 something like that like yeah like i I thought it was 89 oh no that's the original yeah, that's but, the first. That's Jack Nicholson. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's like ninety one or something ninety two. Yeah. So I would have just been graduating high school. <laughs> I was three. And <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, but let me tell you, seeing Michelle Pfeiffer in the Catwoman cat suit was one of those things of like, oh, so that's a thing I like. Yeah, I mean it was a. That's the thing the whole world likes. Like, <laughs> yeah. I really like. I don't really give a fuck what your sexual orientation is, what your kink is. Everyone's a fan of Michelle Pfeiffer in that cat suit. <laughs> it's something else, yeah. There really is, uh, yeah. And and the way she carries herself too. She has that that line about feeling yummy, and you're like, I get it, oh. Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, and it really takes a special kind of person to pull that line off. Like anyone else, it's really cringe, but. She makes yummy sexy. Yeah, she's bringing yeah. yummy back. <laughs> she yeah, exactly move over Justin Timberlake. Let's have Michelle Pfeiffer being yummy. Uh, uh, but so <laughs> so yeah, there's that. Gothic... <laughs> Did both of you and me just phase out a little bit then? <laughs> just imagining, <laughs> right? Yeah, the editing is just going to tighten this up so that we're Real not tight. just doing the Homer Simpson drool. 
Uh, <laughs> but so we wanted to do uh, Edward Scissorhands because it is, you know, it's Christmas. Either there are those horror elements in it, more so than I remember, because it had been a long time since I watched it. Yeah. And and also the thing, the thing I kept thinking about as we were discussing what movie to do and and settling on this one is this is very clearly like Tim Burton kind of planting his flag on Oh yeah. I'm I'm a weirdo who wants to be loved. <laughs> oh god, yeah. This is a reoccurring theme to the nines with Tim Burton. Like all the time. Everything he does <laughs> in some way or form has this element to it. But it's relatable because I feel like we're all little weirdos just wanting to be loved. Yeah, Aww. but some of you, that's true, but some of us are weirder than others. I mean, yeah, there's that. When I say we, I just mean like you and me and people we know. <laughs> right. I'm not, I'm not talking about so, freaks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so there was a time when I feel like I flirted with the goth subculture mm -hmm. and just realized like I just don't have that kind of, of personal bravery to make that conscious choice to be goth. Yeah. Although I always enjoyed, enjoyed, this sounds creepy already. I always <laughs> really found goth girls super attractive. <laughs> and that's why I would have gone goth. It's just like, I look, I don't really like Bauhaus that much. But... <laughs> <laughs> but the fishnet and boots is totally working for me. Yeah. Um, again, I don't think you're alone. <laughs> no, but I think like I, I think that's kind of a one way street though, because I don't think goth guys get the same credit. No, no, but their asses don't look as good in fishnets. Well, you're ex a hundred percent. That's the big problem, and and so that is where uh, Edward Scissorhands comes in, as far as I'm concerned. This is like, how do you make a goth guy attractive and the right. answer is buckles yeah and uh, like the straps like ezra miller doing goth when he did it was ezra miller, uh, ezra miller wasn't it where he had like that bondage fetish wear on like the met gala one year or something i miss this entirely hold on i'm, I'm you keep going i'm you gonna look, look this it up. up yeah i mean that was that was kind of it i'm actually there's also i I exchange way too many things with this friend. There's a, um, um, like a, you know, not a meme, but it was like, um, a comment that had been shared on the Twitter sphere. Mm -hmm. Um, and I can't find it. <laughs> Are you, wait. Um, it's, it's basically just exactly this conversation. So there's, <laughs> there's Ezra Miller in an outfit that looks vaguely like an inflated garbage bag. No, no. Hang on. Was it Ezra? Was it even Ezra Miller? I, I could be completely getting this wrong. Yeah, because he on. does have a goth kind of look, but it looks. Uh, in fact, the way this is described here is a goth Michelin man. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. No, not that one. Okay. Um, you'll, you'll have I to you'll have to it. drop this into. Uh, into I'll put it on the page. Yeah. yeah, I'll put it on the page. I can't find it. I, I, it you know, wait, someone somewhere is just going to be like, "No, dickhead! It was this person." You're yeah. totally wrong. Um, I can't remember, but yeah, there's um, yeah, there's just basically just this like, my type is goth girls in fishnets or something like this. <laughs> sure. Um, uh, it was very kind of like to the point, but yeah. Um, it was something like that, and I was just reminded. This chat reminded me of that as well. <laughs> um, yeah, it's so, definitely a thing. Yeah, for sure. And and I think what Edward Scissorhands tries to do. It's interesting. What we'll get into the the mechanics of this, but it's almost like Tim Burton is like, look, n normies and goss are just never going to work because yeah. you can admire the goth boy. But you just are never going to get him to settle down because goth boy is always going to be goth boy and a cheerleader, <laughs> which is what Winona Ryder is in this movie or, you know, yeah. the, the all American suburban girl. 
Yeah, yeah. That it's just never going to work in that realm. And the other thing that was kind of interesting is I was thinking about this as, as far as like what is Tim Burton trying to say with this movie. There is a moment in Batman Returns where it's like he told the makeup department, I want you to make Michelle Pfeiffer look as much like Helena Bottom Carter as possible. <laughs> because there's one scene in particular where you're like, oh, wow, that you guys look a lot alike. And I had never, you know, crossed the streams on that. But they actually do look very similar. If you gave Michelle Pfeiffer dark hair and teased it out, there's a lot of Helena Bonham Carter in that look. Yeah, well, she has like the eyes and that sh- sort of that face f- shape, with, yeah. like the kind of pointy chin, and it's the chin especially. I think the eyes and the yeah. chin. Yeah, I mean that's all that makes up t- any Tim Burton cartoon, isn't it? Really, <laughs> just big eyes, black hair, and a pointy chin. <laughs> yeah, well, in, so he had his thing with Tina Marie for a while yeah and then met helena bonham carter and then touched uh-huh. tina marie for you know like he went from well she's kind of goth to holy shit she is super goth <laughs> yeah goth 2.0 right and then kind of since he, i don't think they're in a relationship or anything but you know, no not anymore but, they still live together though but they have different wings of the house <laughs> i mean come on <laughs> yeah and i think like eva green is kind of his new muse yeah yeah she's appeared in a fair few and again you can see it for sure like he's got a type there is no doubt about it and Mm -hmm. but ava green is also one of those people that just proves the rule of you just be an attractive goth and men the world over will be like well she's just the hottest woman that ever was (laughs) yeah but eva green is like (sighs) yeah it's insane yeah She's even like hot when she's all uh, dressed up in like that Victorian stuff in Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I'm oh, still all over that. Sure. Well, I'm, again, that's Tim Burton. Just you know, that is if not goth, goth adjacent for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's like steampunk. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Steampunk's hot too, and yeah. that's that kind of borderline of like bondage, kind of mechanical. Yeah. Yep. Straps and buckles. Straps and buckles. That'll do it. And a top hat. <laughs> yeah. That's the name of this episode. Straps and buckles and Straps a top and buckles. Hat. Yeah. <laughs> Done. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, let's, let's talk about the, the movie a little bit before we <laughs> As go. As opposed to our individual fantasies <laughs> or shared fantasies, as the case may be. <laughs> yeah. I really think this is pretty universal. I'm kind of. <laughs> I'm eager just to hear people respond to, oh yeah, Eva Green is, you know, or, or whatever, you know, like the, the I'm waiting God. to hear Gary Hill's opinion. <laughs> I <In> mean, <laughs> I, I feel like we know that already, right? Yeah, but I feel, I, I feel like I want the public to know too. <laughs> so this is Tim Burton kind of doing a fairy tale sort of thing. And the the interesting thing about like Burton films of this era, I find, because this mm-hmm. is the year after Batman. Yeah. And so he had accidentally made one of the most successful movies of all time. Yeah. And, and the whole reason they gave him Batman was because he just couldn't stop making weird movies that made a tremendous amount of money. Like, Pee Wee's Big Adventure had done way beyond what anyone expected it to do. Yeah. And then he did Beetlejuice, which yep. on paper is, well, not even on paper, just when you watch the movie, it's a super weird movie, but it was an incredible hit. Yeah. Even though on paper, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Let's go with that one. Let's go with this kooky idea. Let's see what happens. Oh, this is what happens. Okay. Right. And But he had just such a unique visual style. And, and, and like he had worked for Disney years before and they fired him. <laughs> yeah, because he could never get the illustrations right. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, they he made, uh, uh, geez, some cartoon. It was like a Hansel and Gretel kind of thing right. that ended up the 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 culmination or the denouement of the the cartoon that he made the Hansel and Gretel thing was uh th- that Hansel and Gretel knew kung fu <laughs> 
and <laughs> which sounds kind of great. It's re- it's super hard to find apparently, but it sounds amazing. That does sound so great. And Disney fired him not just because of the like he had his own animation style, and they were like, "No, do it this way," but also because they felt like he had wasted their money. Oh, oh, okay. Making these cartoons that were super dark, like he made Frank and Weenie when he was working for them, and they were like, yeah. "We can't. This is about a dog that dies. We can't <laughs> give this to <laughs> people." You aren't ready for this, but trust me, your kids are going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And yeah, so it like kind of one of the best things that ever happened was Disney booting Tim Burton out on his ass. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he get he takes over, uh, you know, the, these kind of big films like Batman, and then after Batman, they're like, you can do anything you want to do. Yeah. And what he does is Edward Scissorhands. Yep. Which and is, it's just Tim Burton all over. It like they should have just called it Tim Scissor Hands. <laughs> yeah, but it is. It's, it's the blueprint for like pretty much every one of his movies in some way, shape, or form. Like you can kind of dial it all back to Edward Scissor Hands. Um, it's just an absolute like masterpiece of a film, in my opinion. Like I fucking love this film. Um, and it's it's such a basic premise. I mean, even this premise alone is definitely sharing bedfellows with Frankenstein. Um more than one um you know and so you can you know could sort of say oh well you know you don't get Edward Scissorhands without Frankenstein but in terms of like what you're talking about like Tim Burton's unique style um his sort of vision the way that he puts things across and the styles in which he uses to tell stories um is uniquely him people have like you know like I don't want to say imitated but they de- you can definitely see his influences on other people's work sort of since but at the time like no one was making movies that looked like Tim Burton movies oh oh like, no oh no 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 yeah I mean there there really is nothing like a Tim Burton film you know no. like you know you're watching Tim most of the time like I think in the later years when something like the the Alice in Wonderland and that kind of thing kind of looks like generic big budget fairy tale movie yeah but yeah i was really disappointed by that movie i really wanted it to be proper what i would call proper tim burton because can you imagine that that would have been like that would have been like the video game i don't know um if you heard of it at all but alice madness returns oh yeah i love that game yeah, yeah. oh my god right it's so good okay at late like another time i'm gonna i've got like the big art book of it all of all like the concept artwork and things it's fucking amazing so yeah like i was kind of expecting something along those lines like really dark and twisted and lots of gothic imagery and like twisted fairy tale and then but yeah what we got is is kind of like disney doing a live action of alice in wonderland (laughs) like the actual disney version you know yeah yeah and Um, that felt like a disney film in a way that nothing else he ever did felt like yeah yeah exactly because uh, did, he, did he do the Willy? Did he do the Willy Wonka? He did. One? Yeah. Which is yeah. very Tim Burton. It's also very unfortunate. Yeah, I remember having a fun have fun time with that at the cinema though because I was high. <laughs> well, <laughs> that sure. is a film you want to watch high. <laughs> yeah, but it, uh, I'm just. One but of you those... could also watch the original one high, and you know. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's still a chicken getting its head cut off in the tunnel sequence, which is crazy but it it lacks the the warmth of the original i think yeah and and that's it's just you know kind of god tier gene wilder performance it's mm-hmm. like that and young frankenstein and you know like those are the movies that if you just want to feel good about the human race watch those and uh gene wilder is just such a treat yeah yeah he really is but um yeah so all right, well, let's get into the the, the movie a little bit. Since yeah, <laughs> covered every single other subject under the sun. <laughs> yeah, we've digressed appropriately. But so it, it's framed by Winona Ryder in not great old age makeup. I didn't think it was that bad, considering it's like, what, 30 years ago, 30 years old? Maybe it's I not the it... makeup. Maybe it's her old woman voice. That... It's definitely her old woman voice. Yeah, because yeah. it's a real, well, I was... I was just a young girl. And you're like, I don't know about this. 
<laughs> yeah, it's the her voice I think is off putting. I've definitely it stood out to me on this watch. I was like, oh, that's a choice you made. <laughs> but so she's telling her granddaughter this story of um, <laughs> Edward Scissorhands, who from since I saw this movie as a kid, I always refer to it as Edward with the scissors for hands for no good reason. <laughs> it's just it's because my brain's broken is all. And the it, it's Vincent Price's last on screen performance. Yes, which it is. is kind of heartwarming because it's a really wonderful thing. He is this inventor who lives up in the the castle uh, near the town and invents all these crazy inventions that are very reminiscent uh, when you go back and look at it uh, to the stuff in like Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Uh-huh. Of like the Rube Goldberg style contraptions, yeah. And one of the things he makes are uh, little robots that that yeah that run around, yeah. And one of the robots he makes is uh, this kind of, you know, it's Edward Scissorhands. He 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 basically has this scissor robot and decides he's going to give it a heart. Uh, yeah, or a he's got a wizard of Oz that shit. Yeah, hey, because he finds a heart cookie. Yeah, and <laughs> so it creates. <laughs> <laughs> it's just perfect whimsy, isn't it? It's just oh, right. It's him holding up this heart cookie over the robot's chest, and you're like, "Well, this is adorable." Mm-hmm. And uh, so he he basically creates Edward scissor hands and. Before he can give Edward scissor hands, Edward real hands, he dies. He has a heart attack, and there's this like kind of terrifying scene of Edward scissor hands, scissor hands, shredding, scissoring the hands, yeah, scissoring the hands. How many, <laughs> how many hands would Edward scissor hands scissor <laughs> if Edward scissor hands could scissor hands? The new catchy tongue twister, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> and and so that's sort of the origin story of Edward Scissorhands. And after he dies, Edward Scissorhands just lives alone in this castle, uh, trimming the hedges into interesting slash terrifying shapes. Yeah. And wears his somewhat bondage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> his, his a leather buckle fetish outfit that it, it really is such a gimp outfit <laughs> that's what I, I was just gonna say if you put a gimp hood on this thing <laughs> oh it, my god it would just be, be yeah it'd oh. be the guy from pulp fiction <laughs> yes yeah it really would and like, i like to think as well i don't know why because this is really gross but i really like to think that actually because he doesn't ever take it off. He might wear things over it, but he never takes it off. And I like to think that actually he has nothing underneath it. It's just his organ. It's holding his organs together. Like oh, his heart and stuff. Yeah. Like it's his skin. Because uh, like, he probably doesn't have that much synthetic skin around. So it's important that you get the face. Mm-hmm. And you get the hands so he can wear the suit and the rest of it is just this, um, you know, latex and leather. <laughs> right. Like if you, if you cut the suit, it would just spill out like sausage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrifying. So, yeah, that's just that's my thought on it because he never takes it off. Um, so while all that horror is happening <laughs> up at the castle, where his viscera is being barely contained by a thin layer of PVC, <laughs> just a vinyl nightmare walking around up there. <laughs> <laughs> You have the uh, the always charming Diane Weist, uh, who is... I just love her in this. I Look, I'm a Diane Weist fan in general. Parenthood, yeah. Lost Boys, this. I am a, I'm a Weist fanatic. And <laughs> um, she's terrific in this. She's uh, Peg, which is the perfect suburban name, Peg Boggs. That was my nan's name. Peg well, it's Margaret, but she got called Peg for short. Because apparently Margaret is... Well, Peg is definitely what you think of when you hear Margaret. <laughs> but apparently that is a, a shortened name for Margaret. So she went by Peg. That's very weird. It's really weird, right? 
Yeah, because my mother's legit. name was Peggy, and she got called Peg. Yeah. But that's because you just dropped a couple of letters. You didn't just invent a name. <laughs> right. It's like when people are called, like, John, they get called Jack. It's like, that's not the same. That's not even remotely the same name. Yeah. It both has, both has a J in it. Well done. Like, should we call you Joe as well? Like, <laughs> Yeah, or or but Hank for summer. Henry is another one where I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm sure. But why not? Why not at this point? Why not? Uh, but yeah, so anyway, my name was called Peg. As you were. <laughs> Sorry. As you were. <laughs> <laughs> so Peg is running around town because she is trying to sell Avon to all her neighbors who have heard the shtick before and no one is interested. I know. And we meet, she's got the fat neighbor who's kind of cranky. She's got the super sexy. Like, I love you, but you know, I never buy any of this. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, I know. Uh, yeah. But I like the fact that Peg is like this boundless optimist because you it know is. she's going to come back and try to sell something to her another day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I like that. I, I like that about her character. And. Uh, th- there's uh, Kathy Baker playing the the super sexy neighbor who's just looking for a little action. Yeah, she is so fucking funny. Yeah, so fucking funny. And then there's the nosy neighbor, and uh-huh. there's and then the weird religious neighbor. Yeah, the super religious one. Yeah, you always got to have one of them in there. Well, I mean, it is the suburbs, right? Like the, the if modern- Stephen King has taught us nothing, you know. <laughs> The modern equivalent is it's the neighbor with the Trump sign on their lawn still. <laughs> yeah. Still holding out hope. <laughs> yeah. It's, any day now, according to the oh, website, yeah. it, he's going to be president <laughs> next month. <laughs> and, and so <laughs> Peg decides nobody is buying the Avon stuff in town. And she looks up at the castle and she's like, you know, I never go up to this creepy old castle. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's safe. There's no actual storm clouds above it circling. Right. It, so, it, in no I'm way. I'm sure it's fine. In no way does it look like Evo Shandor built this <laughs> and is summoning <laughs> demons. Yeah, there's no, like, lightning crackling. It's fine. We're right. good. <laughs> and she gets up there and she sees all this hedge work. And so clearly somebody lives there. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, like dinosaurs. And my favorite uh, is the hand. Coming yeah. out of the planner, I think that one's really cool. It is really cool. And it's like a centerpiece as well as of everything else. Yeah. Because as well, that's what he craves most. Right. J- human touch, yeah. Being able to, oh. to give and receive human touch. Um, yeah. So she goes inside and finds uh edward scissorhands up on the top floor living in in the attic that is partially caved in (laughs) and it's just again this is such a fairy tale it is a very fairy tale setting yeah and at first she's terrified because she sees him and he you know his fingers kind of snip snip (laughs) and she's like oh uh all right well i'll just leave you to it then also as well like I mean, as the film goes on, we see how endearing he really is. But first, first reactions, he is a very creepy looking guy. Yeah. Like real pale, scarred up to shit, sunken eyes, crazy black hair. Just going off looking like fucking, oh my God, what's his face? Can't fucking remember his name now from the fucking cure. Oh, Robert Smith. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, Yeah, uh, for the cure and everything and just looking like every goth's fantasy basically living up in his goth headquarters well once you realize that all the scars on his face are just because of this of the you know this challenge of having scissors for hands that's when it gets really sad where you're like oh he can't he can't even touch himself you know and not even (laughs) in the fun way just 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 in in the practical kind of way like it's a good job he doesn't have to shave because he's not really like he's not got hair follicles in that way well the shaving would be the least of my worries the problem is the (laughs) the toiletries oh yeah true he's probably a sit downer you it's got to be a bidet it's bidet or bus for edward scissorhands (laughs) he's you know what he would love modern day because everything's automatic yeah right you know the the seat sensors and all that stuff like everything it's got to be there's no getting around it 
So. Um, but he probably has contraptions for that. Like Vincent Price invented some stuff for him. Yeah, like Vincent Price was a thinking man. So yeah, like right. I, I mean, he probably, to be fair, he probably didn't even give him anything. But you know, if Vincent Price did invent like a, a homemade bidet for Edward Scissorhands, which clearly in this conversation he did. <laughs> then you know it would be something crazy like robots with tiny little buckets of water splashing in and stuff <laughs> god yeah it wouldn't be just a straightforward kind of like well you sit down and a jet of water goes right up your winker and you're fine <laughs> yeah uh yeah there'd definitely be something like that and they'd be whistling like a jaunty tune you're right <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which you would get sick of after about the 30th year. <laughs> well, not Edward Scissorhands. He loves it. Yeah, well, that's true. He is. He would love it. He's he would eternally love it. young. Yeah, I wonder if Tim Burton had these conversations when he was sp- spitting out ideas. <laughs> right, he had to consider it at least. Or a producer. <laughs> that's probably how it happened. Some producer was like, all right, Tim, you're going to have to explain it to me like I'm five. How is he wiping his ass? <laughs> I, I, I want to be in the room for that conversation so badly. Like, I really, like, sincerely, really, really hope that that conversation happened. Half tempted to, like, get Tim Burton on social media somewhere and ask him. <laughs> I'm sure people have in the past as well. Question in two parts, Timmy. One, has he hit puberty? Two, how is he managing that? Is he just rubbing up against couches? Stop. <laughs> or is he, do- <laughs> is he doing like the dog ass drag thing along the carpet? Right. Just anything that's a slight protrusion. He's just rubbing his <laughs> junk against. In the hopes that he finds the right rhythm. <laughs> what happened to this episode? <laughs> this was going to be such a sweet episode. I think it is. I think we're getting to the bottom of a lot of truths. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Well, now we've answered those unnecessary questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the shit that people tune in for, I'm sure. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, stay right. tuned, everyone. We're playing Would You Rather later. <laughs> That's true. That is true. We are. We actually are. So. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway. I'm not enough feeling of so your... nervous about the levels that I've gone to now. <laughs> enough of your filth, Kate. <laughs> so then... <laughs> Diane Weiss kind of puts it together like, oh, he's been left alone up here and he's not a maniac about to murder me. No. And so she asks him to come home because, of course, she does because she's a mom and she's very sweet. Oh, her natural maternal instinct for him is just too fucking adorable. Yeah. It's just immediate, unconditional caring and love. Like, immediate. Right. Here is someone in need of help and how can I fix that? Yeah. Yeah. She, oh, you know what? If we were all a little bit more like Peg, the world would be a lot better. You know, I catch. <laughs> so my my girlfriend is, you know, the mother of two adult children. Yeah. But there is a, just a natural instinct that she has because she's been a mother for so long that yeah. every now and again I'll just catch her doing mother shit with me. <laughs> Does she, like, wipe the sides of your mouth? Not like that, but uh, here's a good example. <laughs> so, the other night, um, she's making soup for dinner. Yeah. At, at her place. So, I go over and we have this, like, lasagna soup. It was really good. And as I'm leaving, um, she says, hey, do you want to take some of this with you? And I say, no, 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 that's fine. Like, give it to uh, her son, Matthew, is is working and i was like just you guys split it up it was really good but you know um i i'm fine i've got food at home and then she just hands me the tupperware that she is already prepared like the asking was a formality yeah she had you know cartoned up this food and was sending it with me whether i wanted it or not yeah, and, just take it, get out of my kitchen. Right. And it, <laughs> but it's that kind of thing. Like, there's, yeah. a, you know, I think that 
uh, there is a maternal aspect to that kind of stuff. And, and I find it just very sweet and charming about her. Very, and, very sweet. Yeah. And, and she'll be the first to say like, food is my love language. And here, here is, you know, Ugh. I'm sending, I'm sending this home with you because I want you to have something good to eat. Uh, yeah. Oh, she's I, Oh, it's like my nan. Sorry, not to compare your girlfriend to my nan, but like my nan would be, my, you'd be like, she, you'd go over and she'd just be like, oh, can I get you anything pet? Because she's from North, so I'm not going to even try and do the Yorkshire accent, but she calls it, cause she'll call you pet. She'll be like, oh, do you, do you want anything pet or do you want anything Ben? And, uh, and you'll be like, oh, uh, yeah, I'll make you something. You sit down, I'll make you something. And then you finish whatever she's made you and like 20 minutes later, like, are you still hungry, pet? Let me make you something. I'm like, no, nah, like, it's fine. Like, I'm good. I'm like, no, 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 shush, shush, shush. Like, it's fine. And this is why I am not a skinny supermodel because I grew up with this woman constantly feeding me. <laughs> yeah. But it was this, and then she sent you on away with some cakes that she's baked and they were good cakes. So you weren't even saying, you weren't even doing that false thing. Oh no, 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 I don't. No, I'll have that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that with me. It might last the journey. Um, you know, like, um, and she was just that. And it was just, yeah. And she would look so pleased when you did, like she really like got a satisfaction from being able to like feed you because I think I think that is also a northern thing like not just exclusively a northern England thing but like I think that is just because it's something that she can do and she'll know that you appreciate and that you and it's and it's it's not it's like it's with love and it's with warmth Mm -hmm. and it's with thought you know and so yeah nothing made nothing made her happier than me stuffing my face on her living room sofa and honestly nothing made me happier so yeah. <laughs> it was a win win honestly but yeah it's that is very much the kind of like you know you 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 give you give people you love food right because yeah. it's com- it's comforting it, it's it's comforting and it's it's you're taking care of your own you know yeah yeah exactly and and there's something really wonderful about that and that's you know again that's peg in this movie is i i'm going to i take care of my family i take care of my husband i make sure that my son and my my daughter are both well taken care of and there's so much love that i have to give that i'm gonna take in all the strays too yeah and and again that's very i i'm very familiar with that move and i love Mm -hmm. it there is nothing more i like than someone that is just like I have I am so overflowing with goodwill and kindness that it can't help but spill out on onto anyone I come across. Yeah. I mean it's just that's my aspiration. No, it's it's absolutely lush. It is such a lush. And and anyone anyone who you know who's like that is just like they they just sort of like make you want to be better. Oh, you know, yeah. like they you're just like, "Ah, oh, I want to do that too." Until it comes to it and you're like, no, nah, actually, I'm good. I'm okay. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, they, they definitely have that like, like, a, I don't want to say attraction. I don't mean it in like a, like a, a sexy way. Not like a you and me way, obviously. Sure. Um, I, uh, I mean, I mean it just like it, they just, you're drawn to people like that, I think. Um, and I think like, you're right. It's, it's the, the strays, it's the misfits, the outcasts and stuff because, they're the ones who usually need the most love. And, you know, I feel like she, in that moment when he says that she's like, you know, your father is, where's your father? And he's like, he never woke up. Yeah. And in that moment, immediately, everything made sense to her mm-hmm. about what he's gone through. She, you know, she's not a dumb woman. She's very smart. And like, you know, immediately she'll know scars on his face got scissors for hands well yeah two plus two equals four and like he's not got a dad he's up here alone right that's all i need to know you're coming home with me yeah and i'm gonna feed you up right well i I guess you're coming with me then and yeah oh and off they go and Uh, he's so happy in the car he's so happy well (sighs) it's it's his first time out of the castle he has seen this world that he has looked out the window onto for all these years now suddenly he is given the opportunity to, to be part of it and you know yeah. he, he sees the kids playing and the, the you know you go from this kind of drab dark colors inside the castle 
to these vibrant pastel colors of the houses and the yeah. verdant green of the lawns and all that kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, and he is just overjoyed, you know. Um and so her there's Kevin who is the son. Yeah. And Bill as played by the amazing Alan Arkin. Yeah. Um and as, he's so good in this. Yeah, he's because he takes it all in stride. He you know? does. He he knows what Peg is about. He knows like as soon as he shows up, he's just like, Oh boy, I guess uh you just brought him home, huh, Peg? And is totally <laughs> fine with it. Yeah, like their relationship is so special. You know, like he just Yeah, it's exactly that. Like he's just like, Well, yeah, it's what that's what she does. Right. That's okay. That's like, it totally why i love her she is that kind of person and and what am i gonna do but go along with it yeah you exactly know? and like i mean that's <laughs> that's just really displayed in that dinner scene <laughs> so it's giving ahead a little bit but when uh just just after joyce has like essentially attacked <laughs> edward in the back of the salon and like uh he says at the dinner table while they're out, he says, Oh yeah, no, the salon is really great. Joyce me showed me to the back where she took off all her clothes. Yeah. <laughs> and like he just doesn't it seems like he he doesn't even hear here's what he said, because he just carries on like, yeah, the salon would be great and you know, and that sounds like a really good uh, you know, opportunity and stuff when like you know, Peg and Kim and Kevin are just at the table, just like, what the fuck did we just hear? Right. Like, be kind, rewind. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, and like, and also as well, like, Peg is just brilliant because she's, because <laughs> she obviously she's kind of friends with Joyce, and she knows she'll know exactly what Joyce is like, mm -hmm. and she's just so she's not only has she got this what the fuck kind of thing, but also oh god, okay you know this kind of reaction on her face like yeah yeah i 100 percent believe that she did that <laughs> um so uh but whereas bill's just like carrying on as though nothing's happened he just yep yeah, takes it all in stride and cool well you know all i heard is that the salon salon worked out okay and you're gonna get a business opportunity kind of thing <laughs> you know <laughs> i really like that scene where after kim uh, comes home for the first time when Renona Ryder first meets him and just loses her shit as you would. <laughs> I and, know what you're gonna say. And Bill just kind of takes Edward aside, like to the the rec room or whatever, pours him a scotch, <laughs> and just you know, Edward, boy, women that age are just uh, boy, they're a mess, and just has this kind of like it's it's the same talk he would give his son, you know, yeah. of like you're a man now let's have a drink and we're just going to talk about you know women are mercurial and capricious and what are you going to do you're just uh, the only thing you can do is love them so uh have i a think drink. the word those are all very kind words the words he uses is crazy yeah, right. um because i remember going what now <laughs> uh the wonderful world of teenage girls is what he calls it yeah yeah, but yeah, it's a really lovely moment, though. Uh, yeah, it's he's he's a good guy, you know. Yeah, and the, this whole family is just a good family. Like, I like a movie. Not every movie, of course, because you have to have conflict and all that kind of stuff. But I really enjoy a movie or a TV show or whatever that showcases like here's a family where they all just like each other, you know. Yeah, and because of the, the stereotype, I think tends to be the you know, that kind of fractured family where everybody's always kind of trading barbs uh, with one another and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, sure. and some of that is true. Like, there is some of that in real life. But also, there are plenty of families that are just like, you know what? We just we just like each other. And yeah, we, we just we work. Yeah. You know, we're just here to support each other. And, you know, life can be difficult. And we're just going to we're going to kind of face it all down together. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, I really like that. And so, once Edward is at home, um, he has <laughs> some tussles with like water beds and whatnot. Oh my god, that's so funny! It's I love as well. Like he just puts the teddy bear over it as though that is gonna. It's basically it's the kind of like the Tim Burton version or the Edward Scissorhands version of that meme where you know he just slaps a band aid on that like burst water cooler. Yeah. 
you know, just like, yeah, that'll work. No, that, <laughs> that won't, that won't work. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's funny. He's been working it all out and he's trying to get dressed in the clothes that Peg's given him and he just cannot. And it's like, it's, it's funny because it's an adjustment for both of them, of course. And it's not just like having someone in the house, but she has to kind of come to understand like what his capabilities are and what he'll need help with because he has razor blades for fucking fingers um and um yeah so she's like oh yeah of course yeah of course you're not gonna be able to get that shirt on let here let me help you and then he immediately like cuts the the what they the the uh what they called the what are they called here both help me out what's the suspenders yes that's it um yeah and then next scene we see them in their like safety pin together yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it's just, it's a really like adorable kind of very endearing scene or oh, like bunch of scenes together. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's really nice. And then they have that dinner scene where <laughs> I don't think I've ever felt more suspense watching someone try to eat a pea. Oh, I know. I do it's like just... <laughs> the fact that, that like his one true skill is buttering bread though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and again, he looks so pleased with himself. Yeah, and oh. and it really is like Johnny Depp gives a, a terrific performance as this really, you know, like it, it, it's Tim Burton, right? It's just it, he he is an outsider who so desperately wants to be included in in normal life, and yeah. is and loves being there. But there's constant reminders that he is an other, that he is different. Yeah. And yeah. the family is is totally fine with it. But, you know, when you get to the end of the movie and, and you know, <laughs> spoilers, it doesn't work out. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of the, the theme of the film is that no matter no matter how much he tries, he's never going to be one of these people. No. And and that's kind of the the tragedy of the film, but yeah. But at first, like we're still in the in the the happy days, of, yeah, yeah. Of, like the neighbors saying, like, "Why well, we hear you got a man, and <laughs> let's get a look at him." <laughs> when, when's that barbecue happening? What now? Right. <laughs> oh, I'll bring my seven layer dip. You know. <laughs> Uh, I really like ambrosia salad. <laughs> ambrosia salad, that's <laughs> which right. looks so fucking horrible. It's so gross. Ambrosia Every time salad. I watch that scene, I feel so sorry for Johnny Depp because I don't know how many times he'll have had to have done that. Oh, it's uh, <sighs> ambrosia salad is. I don't know. I don't know what that is. It's just it's like whipped cream and fruit and Jello. It's just gross. That sounds awful and i don't know if it's a uniquely southern thing it must not be because tim burton is not a southern guy but i I, it is something that when i was a kid i remember seeing a lot of at potlucks and stuff so it is (laughs) it is accurate uh if not delicious um but yeah so you know there it's kind of like how do we make this guy fit into this world and at first he starts off with trimming the hedges, which he's really good at. And yep. uh, I really like how Alan Arkin is like, That's, you just did a great job there, Ed. You know, <laughs> like really into it. <laughs> I love how your bill voice is your hang voice. It kind of is. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> Propane. So, Ed, uh, have you thought about burning clean, burning propane, Ed? Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> Then comes the salon stuff that you had you had referenced earlier, but he kind of learns like, oh, he can cut women's hair and does these almost like Dr. Seussian styles. Oh, it's total Whosville. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, up to and including Diane Weist, who gets the most normal haircut of anyone. But Yeah, it's actually pretty stylish and contemporary, honestly. Like, yeah. It looks really good, especially the final cut, because she keeps going back. Probably out of pity more than anything else, I think. But actually, it looks really good by the end. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, there's the, the salon that um, Joyce wants to open uh, with him. And... 
uh oh there's also the point of um Winona Ryder's boyfriend as played by Anthony Michael um, Hall. Oh, he's such a dickhead. Oh, he is he's the worst. Such a dickhead. He just and I've like I've seen him play so many like nice guy roles. And it's, it's really good to see him be a dickhead. <laughs> well, and, you know, if you look at something like The Breakfast Club, he's kind of the Edward Scissorhands, right? He's the nerdy, yeah. awkward kid. Yeah. And, and it, it, you're right. It's fun to see him kind of on the other side of that in this movie. But um, so they <laughs> they break into a house with uh because jim wants man thing michael hall he wants to buy a van and his parents are like no 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 we're not gonna buy you a van you need to work for it yeah and so uh he gets edward scissor hands to use his scissor hands to try to pick the lock onto his parents house because he's basically stealing from his parents yeah and, and then it as it happens, they, they have a burglar alarm that goes off and everybody runs except for Edward, even though Winona Ryder is like, we have to go back and get Edward. But sure enough, he gets arrested. Yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, they they do a psychological examination on him uh, and, yeah. and say that he has no sense of reality or common sense, <laughs> which I like. Oh, you just cut out when you said that, what? That he has no sense of reality or common sense. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we should all be so lucky. Right. <laughs> yeah. But it's it, it does the, the analysis that they give does completely make sense and it does seem to be that way with him. He's a child. He's a he's a child in a grown man's body, basically well, I say a grown man, you know what I mean. Um, like because he's had no world experience, he only learns from what he knows from books. Um you know, and he, yeah, like, and he gets read fairy tales. Um, so he just has this very kind of like childlike, very black and white sense of right and wrong, which is like, you know, which is very much displayed later. Like he probably sees uh, Michael Anthony, I uh, say Anthony Michael Hall's character um, as a, like Jim, as, a, as an ogre of sorts. Mm-hmm. Well, know? initially and, he sees him as a friend initially yeah and then obviously like he sees what uh jim's really like and especially when he lashes out at kim which i love kim and jim um you know and he yeah and i think yeah he's he's sort of like well no like you don't hurt her if you hurt her i'll hurt you and it's that very he doesn't have that sense of like gray area or morality or you know it's like when he it's like when bill sort of gives him that test of like you know, if you see a bunch of money in the street, what do you do? Do you keep it? Do you give it away? Do you spend it on loved ones? Do you hand it into the police? And he's like, I spend it on my, my loved ones. Because to him, that's the nicest thing to do. And and yeah, Kim like says very much the same in terms of defending it. And like, he doesn't ha- understand the kind of like, the social expectations of what's right and what you're supposed to do in certain situations. Because Bill rightly kind of, well rightly or wrongly but like he says nice doesn't always mean it's right yeah yeah and it's like that's the fine line that edward just can't comprehend he's just like no this is a bad thing so i'm if i can do something about it i'm gonna do something about it if my friends need help i'm gonna help them what's wrong let's i'm just helping my friends yeah i'll i'll just i'll use my scissors to just open this door because he gets fed a bunch of well he he also says that he knows it was Jim's house, but he wanted to do it because Kim asked him to. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, he's just like, right, cool. Well, I'll do that then. My my loved one asked me to do this. So I'm going to. Right. Yeah. It's very, very, like you said, it's very, very straightforward, black and white. Somebody I care about and who I trust asked me to do a thing. And so then I will do it. Yeah. It's almost like dog, dog dependable, isn't it? Like, yeah. in a way. Yeah. Like, you know, they'll just go, yeah, cool. We're going over here now. Okay, I'll follow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not that Edward says a hands a dog. I mean, I didn't like. <laughs> no, sure. No, <laughs> I, I, I know what you meant. But yeah, I've just, it, it, as we were talking about before the show, like I'm I'm a recent dog owner. And, yeah, yeah. And it's so crazy because I had kind of forgotten that aspect of it, of, of just having that 
sort of personality in your life that is just like you are the best what (laughs) what do you want to do what a great idea yeah and you know because i was a cat owner cats are just like you are fucking stupid where is my (laughs) and (laughs) you have one job human do it (laughs) right uh whereas the dog is just you know like i wherever you're going i'm going to and it's going to be fantastic and we're going to have a great time also rub my belly yeah exactly (laughs) but so edward unfortunately is also accused of rape at this point yes because Joyce, you know, Joyce comes on to him again and he, he basically blows her off because he's in love with Kim now. Yeah. And so between the burglary and the rape charge, um, basically everybody starts avoiding Edward. Yeah. And, and along with the whole family, like they're, they, they kind of become outcast. Uh, uh, you know, the, the weirdness of Edward has rubbed off on them. And they yeah, become like, other too. Yeah, they're like tainted by association. Yeah, yeah. And again, I mean, if I were psychoanalyzing Tim Burton, it would be like, well, you know, when you be when you take in another, you become another, and the world at large, the normies, will not stand for that. You know? Yeah, yeah. And that can like transcend across so many different like social things as well. And the fact that like you know they don't they stand by him. Like, they don't ever turn their back on him. They're all like, well, no, he's our family now. So, like, we're going to do what we're doing. And if you don't like it, well, that's that. But we know Edward. We trust Edward. And he's he's family. And, like, I mean, there is a point where, like, she does, where uh, Peg does start to wonder whether it'd be better if he go back. Um, And I don't know whether this is, like, her telling herself this or what. But she says, like, you know, because he he's at least there he's safe and i don't know whether that's just her sort of like placating her own guilt for thinking that um of like thinking like he needs to he should probably go back um or what but like for the most part though they do sort of it, like there's never any big stand down like between like say peg and the town ta- uh, like and and edward say where they're like um they you know they're like yeah no edward's terrible and you need to get out or anything and so because there's no kind of clear defining moment of that the townsfolk will just assume because they have been so far that you know they're on edward's side kind of thing yeah and so around christmas uh hence the the reason we're talking about this movie (laughs) other than the fact that it's just really good but um as they're the family is doing christmas decorations um, Kim finds Edward outside in kind of the, maybe the most iconic moment of the movie. Yeah, I'd say so. Is Edward doing these eye sculpture, uh, one, one of Kim. And as he's shaving the eyes, it basically makes snow. And Kim dances in the snow, uh, as she watches, you know, Edward create. And that's again, boy tim burton just laying himself on the page of here is this oddball creator creating something beautiful yeah that is both the the pinnacle like it is the reason that that kim kind of falls in love with edward at this at this point but also it's his undoing because as this is happening jim shows up and distracts kim and when kim turns towards jim edward you know in the midst of his mad uh sculpting cuts her hand yeah because he's distracted too and he just sort of whirls around and his his blade catches her hands and slashes her palm yeah and jim is is basically like you're you're trying to kill kim and and attacks him and edward just runs away from this yeah. And rips off the clothes that, you know, that were given to him and basically wanders the neighborhood like Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. Uh, you know, p- poking holes in car tires and making devil shrubs for the religious Oh my nut, god. Which is the That's best. so funny. Yeah. So good. It's, yeah. It's great. 
And oh, that is so good. M- meanwhile, Kim breaks up with Jim because of Please. what he just did. And he's like a total prick anyway. <laughs> yeah, so he just goes <laughs> Joe just goes to get loaded. And uh Peg and, and Bill roam the neighborhoods in their car searching for Edward. And then uh they find him, you know, Kim is like, Oh, I'm so glad you're safe and you know, we're going to keep you uh, away from all of this. But while they're kind of having this reunion, Jim and his drunk buddy are driving towards them. And Kevin, the the son, is in the path of the van. Yeah. And so Edward, seeing Kevin in danger, grabs him and pushes him out of the way but as he's doing this, he ends up cutting Kevin's face. And people yeah. who have gathered around to see this, it, to them, it looks like Edward is attacking this young child. Yeah, it's just, ugh. he's basically just like done every single terrible thing, like the worst things you can imagine. Like he's raped someone, apparently. He's stolen. He's attacking a child. He's attacking a girl. Like, you know, it's just, and none of it is true. He's just, ugh just so unfortunate yeah yeah it, it well again it's the you can't you can't be this different and live in normal society because you're gonna hurt people unintentionally yeah you know? yeah uh, two different worlds yeah and and in that way i think diane weist was right like I, you're i think you're right that it could be partially rationalization but she's not wrong like he is she, no she's not you know, as sad as it is, uh, and that's, you know, again, the, there is no goth thought more than, you know, the woman I love is just safer without me. That's <laughs> that's the most goth shit ever. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> like, the, <laughs> the self-sacrifice of lo- lonely che- uh, lonely chewed, loneliness and solitude. Yeah. Uh, just like, no, no, you go. <laughs> right. I want to stay here and brood. <laughs> <laughs> My love is dangerous. <laughs> I, should, I don't mean to laugh. I don't mean to laugh. But yeah, it really is. I'm just getting angel flashbacks, basically. Like angel and spike oh, flashbacks. Oh, no shit. Right. Yeah. Right? Like, that's... <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at the golf, goth culture at all. Um, no, no, just... but you're right. Like that, that, the whole premise of like, if I have one moment of happiness, I'll become a monster. <laughs> That's yeah. goth ass shit too, right? And just before you even add in the coats, you know, right like... before the pea coat, yeah, <laughs> and the leather pants, <laughs> just At, like, you really did wear those well, though. Sure. At least Spike was more punk rock, you know. Yeah, he, he yeah. Didn't, he he didn't traffic with it, and and often made fun of Angel, which is something that. So good. Uh, I appreciate it in that show. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, that's why I was laughing because I was just like, yeah, I've come across this before. <laughs> it's like even even like the crow is just the goth of goths. Oh, you yeah. know, with like, <laughs> you know, their love just causes that just causes death. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, I mean, it's speaking of Winona Ryder. Her saying in Bram Stoker's Dracula, take me away from all this death. You're just like, oh, wow. I can't believe that a Machines of Love and Grey song isn't playing while she says that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But it's really good. It's good shit. It's fucking good shit. Look, yes, are are we goofing on goths? Yes. But also (laughs) because that is like when you are sad everyone is a goth at heart like it, the moment that somebody breaks up with you that you truly care about you live the goth lifestyle whether or not you dress that way you live it for at least a small period of time oh yeah oh yeah a hundred percent like yeah i more than once sure but, <laughs> for sure like yeah when i when i've ever been dumped um actually even sometimes when i've done the breaking up just because i felt so h- horrible about it um like yeah it's definite just like wallowing for like weeks and, and longer sometimes and you know and just just shutting myself up in a room and playing like emotional music <laughs> and like you know just 
just not wanting to be a part of the world like don't look at me mm-hmm. you know like don't all of that kind of stuff and um actually there was a point where i went through a real goth phase so i, I had that going for me as well as oh, nice. all of the yeah yeah but it was funny because i had like bleach blonde hair oh but like loads of eyeliner mm-hmm. and like bright red lipstick because i was i was basically my my makeup muse was Brody doll of the distillers okay but with like shoulder length platinum blonde hair <laughs> um, yeah. i'm not gonna say that i pulled it off because i don't like to lie um <laughs> but it was a look for sure you know it was it was different from all the other goth chicks out there at least in my little town that i grew up in um mm-hmm. and i'd like wear like the leather wristbands and sure. stuff studded to take uh, no, because I was a little bit obsessed. This is why the Brody Dahl makeup, because I was obsessed with Josh Hobb of Queens of the Stone Age. Okay. Um, and so I would adorn her makeup on the off chance that I would find my own Josh Hobb. And, and um, could really go with the flow. <laughs> oh, oh, that was so good. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> wow, sir. Um, <laughs> that was That was spectacular. Uh, that was that's my favorite song of theirs as well that video is just so fucking incredible it's a great um, song it's such a great song oh, i used to play the shit out of that when i played guitar um and also as well i'm sorry but i feel like i can't listen to that song in the car especially if i'm on the motorway or the freeway for our stateside listeners mm-hmm. um and not drive stupidly above the limit when that song's playing and honestly if i get pulled over I feel all I'll have to do is play that song and just turn to the officer and be like, come on, right. like you're not speeding to this. And they'll be like, oh yeah, no, you're right on your way. All right. Yeah. Let me, let me provide an escort. Yeah. Yeah. Just to give you a clear run until the song ends because you have to go like a hundred. Yeah. Share that playlist so, with me. Yeah, exactly. We'll just hit, like link up on Spotify. I got you. I'm going you know? to let you, know? you off with a warning to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> rock and or roll um (laughs) (laughs) but yeah so i kind of had that whole kind of like and because josh hom wore just plain leather wristbands i too wore plain leather wristbands with like a a shirt with rolled up sleeves because that was his look all right choker or no choker uh it's kind of uh, depending if i was feeling like in a party mood or not okay but i would wear like i would wear like the studded collar like I, I tried wearing it for school once and i got away with the wristbands but the, the dog collar was yeah that was too much all right all right yeah yeah uh, uh but yeah i went through that whole goth phase and when my boyfriend at the time broke up with me which i think i've mentioned on previous episode on a previous episode where it was just like the whole my whole world crumbled for about four years um he won't listen to this show so i can be honest about it and not like you know inflate his ego more than it already is mm-hmm. um <laughs> but yeah so uh yeah i went through that whole kind of like goth no one understands me like i'm just i i could never rejoin society kind of thing <laughs> no no one has ever heard like this before <laughs> yeah my pain is unique to me and me alone <laughs> yeah i mean that is the goth vibe at heart which is i am heartbroken in a way that no one could possibly understand <laughs> because no one has ever loved this deeply and so when it when it is gone the coldness that replaces it my it's, heart is a black hole. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, oh, I love it all. I love it so much. I love... It's so good. Yeah. I mean... Look. Oh, my God. Evanescence was such a mood for 16-year-old me. Oh, of course. Oh, dear God. I forgot about that. It just came back to me. It just... Oh, I brought it back to life. Ah. <laughs> See, I can do it, too. Not, not as smoothly as you. Because I got too pleased with myself too early on. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that that whole album was just my breakup album. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I'm, like, I'm listening to that album tomorrow. Christmas be damned. <laughs> just a, like a drop C chord and an operatic singer. That's all you oh, need. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so. Fuck yeah. Throw in a key change. Oof. Yeah. Ooh, baby. Oh, man. That is... That is air-clenchingly good. Absolutely. No, I mean, Amy Lee, speaking of, of attractive goth women, holy oh, shit. Yeah. Right. I mean, you you mix in an incredible dramatic singer into that mix. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, you're in Ava Green territory. <laughs> right. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Amy Lee was great. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, back to the film. What was oh, yeah, about? yeah. So <laughs> anyway, um, after a being uh, perceived as attacking this kid, the police show up and Edward, like Kim tells Edward, like, you've got to run. And so off he goes. There's an angry mob chasing after him, all Frankenstein style. Hundred percent, yeah. And um, you know the officer Jim, the cop from earlier, um, t- takes a couple of shots, and the idea is that like, oh, I, I hit Edward. He's he's gone now. Um, but the mob doesn't believe him, and the, and the cop is actually kind of more than a little understanding of Edward and, and sort of understands that he's a troubled guy and needs a little yeah. help and that kind of thing. So the cop is, he not, says he's worried about him, doesn't he? Like at the courthouse yeah. earlier on, he's less like, are you going to be okay? Like, is he going to be okay? Yeah. Yeah. So, I like him. Yeah. I mean, he is. So the, the family is not alone in trying to take care of Edward, but um, there is, <laughs> there is no understanding in this mob. No. And There's no stopping Joyce. <laughs> right. And so Oof. they're they're headed to the castle along with Edward, who is ahead of them. And Kim gets there before they do. Yeah, I'm not how sh- uh, entirely sure how that works. but uh, You know, she's, <laughs> she's got the power of love, as Huey Lewis would call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the most goth of bands. Nothing's Huey more Lewis powerful. <laughs> Um, you know uh look if there's anything more goth than hip to be square i don't know what it is <laughs> <laughs> but when kim is there and she's like i you know take me away from all this death um no she's very emotional and yeah uh this <clears throat> is the moment of you know i i i just want you to touch me is that what she says or hold me, that's what it is. Hold Just me, hold yeah. Me. And he yeah. says, I can't. Oh. oh, again, the most goth of goth. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you know, like, or that kind of like the, the look away. I can't. Yeah. It's, you know, like. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I, it's so good. Like, I, we're, we are making fun, but also it is because. I love it, it is so just much. so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm grinning right now and not in a. A, a, a piss taken way just in a oh my god this is awesome right this is not an ironic appreciation this no, is just not, good old fashioned not remotely yeah like this is the kind of thing when you listen to um uh close to you by the cure right yeah. you know of that like oh yeah this song just captures all of my emotion right now <laughs> yeah that's a that's a closing your eyes while you sing along to it moment yeah Made yeah. myself so sick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Anyway, so <laughs> after after the gothiest of goth moments where he's like, I can't hold you. Uh, <laughs> I'm too dangerous. My love is too dangerous. <laughs> yeah. And Jim busts in <sighs> and uh, is like kind of knocks Edward away and then is going after Kim. Yeah, and big no-no. Right. At this point, this is one of those like black and white dog logic kind of things of, yeah. oh, you're about to hurt the person who means the most to me? Yeah. I'm about to have to scissor hands you right in the gut. Yeah. Which is... And he just... The look on his face is just pure. I am in complete control here, motherfucker. Like, yeah. Right. Like, I've been I careful do not to hurt people because <laughs> tried, I... anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah, like... You know, like Edward Scissorhands is a good person. Yes. But he <clears throat> also understands that he has scissors for hands and can <laughs> fuck somebody up. <laughs> and will do so if you touch a hair on her pretty head. Yeah. Yeah. On her chinny chin chin. This is the textbook definition of fuck around and find out. Oh, like, 100%. And Jim has fucked around for the last time <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and found out the hard way. Yeah. And out he goes, out the window of this place. Yeah, and, so dramatic. Yeah, and, and so Jim is dead, which I, is strangely, I think, kind of dark for this movie to take that turn where 
Uh-huh. He's like Edward Scissorhands is a murderer at the end of this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think like once it's it takes once the town turns, the film turns because we got stuff of rape going on. Like, you know, we are treading on really dark waters here. And, you know, it's it's very up until this point been very kind of whimsical and lots of bright colours and oh, isn't this cute and you know, whatever and oh look he's just you know, he's one of us now and and then all of a sudden, bam, it's just like, yeah, we got rape, we've got murder, we've got you know, like it's and it doesn't it doesn't shy away from going to those places and it doesn't like you know, it doesn't go full horror movie, but it definitely goes it goes to like the original grim tales as opposed to the disney-fied version of the grim tales you know yeah like it's that fairy tale twist yeah for sure and uh kim doing some quick thinking here uh she she kisses edward one last time and tells him goodbye Again, she tells very... him he loves she loves him yeah. and he closes his eyes just savoring that moment knowing that he'll never get it again and it's just it's heartbreaking yeah it's it's very good and she goes back downstairs, grabs one of Vincent Price's failed experiments. Yeah, and... like just a spare scissor hands he has lying around. Oh, this old thing. <laughs> yeah, and show goes out where the mob has assembled, and they're like, "We're here to kill Edward Scissor Hands." And she's like, "You're too late." Jim and Edward killed each other, and for proof, here is his one of his hands. Yeah, and. Uh, the neighbors are all like, oh shit, we were going to do that. But now it seems like maybe that was a bad choice. Huh? Maybe (laughs) murder isn't always right. (laughs) Yeah. It's a real kind of like odd response though. Cause they're like, oh, I guess I'm going to go home now. (laughs) Yeah. They just kind of dip, you know, dip the, uh, the torches in the rain bucket and, (laughs) you know. (laughs) Yeah, like see you Sunday at brunch. Yeah, oh yeah, like I'll call you. <laughs> you know, it's uh, like just sort of. I guess we'll turn, we'll return to our lives now. I guess, and it's just like you just went from like ten to like two, in just like that whole all that bloodlust and all of that fervor. Just oh, okay, well I guess that's all gone now. It's just like it's just it, and that's not a criticism at all. It's um, it's 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 a testament to like how quickly these characters can switch to any given moment. And how they all kind of like, I hate using the term sheeple, but like, (laughs) I hate it so much, but it's the word that keeps coming back in my head when I'm trying to describe them. But like, all they need to be told is, is like, you know, pointed where to go and what, you know, and they'll take an agenda and run with it. And then as soon as they're presented with something else, they're like, oh, I guess we'll go over here now then. It's just like, I'm so glad that this film doesn't have Facebook. Let's just put it that way. Oh yeah, for sure. (laughs) you know because they would be the worst um but it's 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 that and i say it's not a, it's not a criticism on the writer i don't mean like oh well that would never happen they've just gone from like 10 to 2 i don't mean it that way at all i just mean that they are just so fucking stupid <laughs> yeah. that it doesn't take much for them to go from 10 to 2 and so then we reach the conclusion of our film which goes back to old lady uh winona rider and she finishes this story by saying, I never saw Edward again. And her granddaughter is like, why didn't you go see him? And she says, well, I just wanted him to remember me the way I was when I was young and beautiful and he loved me. Yeah. And the little girl says, well, do you think he's still up there? And she says, oh, yeah, I, th- I think he's still there because it snows. And before he came to visit us, it never snowed before. And now, every now and again, it does. And sometimes, she says, you can still catch me dancing in it. And uh, then we moved, the camera moves up to the castle where Edward Scissorhands, sure enough, is still young and beautiful and making his eye sculptures. uh, uh, One of them being Kim dancing in the snow. Yeah. And... Uh, then we get a flashback to a young Kim herself dancing uh, and with the angel eye sculpture that, that um, Edward is creating for and so forth. And yeah, it's a really sweet ending to this movie. Like, you know, it again, it's very tragic that, hey, here was a love that was, it was too pure to last and, you know. Yeah. 
uh, and and that kind of thing again, <laughs> just as goth as you want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But but that's what this is. It's a total goth fairy tale. Yeah, it's a gothic romance for sure. And, and like, it's wonderful. I, do you know what? It's not even like like it is tragic, but it is also kind of happy because through his experience, he's learned his self value. And he's learned how to channel, like, because the garden at the end is beautiful. It's well kept. He takes pride in it. He works on it constantly. That's his creation. And, you know, just like he was, you know, the inventor's creation. And, you know, it's something that he can nurture and keep going. It's, he, he'll he never die. He's not he's not a human. He's man-made. Um, and he'll just go on living forever, young and beautiful and gothic and you know, tragic, tragic, but with his garden and, and that's actually really nice. And he seems content in it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He, he's found, you know, uh, happiness in his creation yeah, as opposed sure. to, uh, you know, actual love, but, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's very sad in that way, but also, you know, I, again, it's just the most, you know tim burtonish thing of like well, i may never find real love but i'll always the beauty is is in my art and you know yeah. kind of thing. Um, yeah so you know but it, it it's wonderful and so uh, good. you know it, it's hard you know because i was definitely a weird little kid yeah uh, and it's hard not to watch a movie like this and be like oh i totally get that that movie is for me and it turns out like you said earlier it's just that it's more universal than anyone ever gives credit to you know yeah yeah for sure I think like it's odd because um like I reckon this is probably probably kind of on a bigger scale um like on a ratio like what it is in real life when I was at school like the quote-unquote popular kids was actually a really small group and the misfits and the ones that didn't quite fit in were massive. But, like, it was that kind of one small clique that was considered the quote-unquote popular group. But it was just like, you had the smallest group of friends and everyone else kind of just thought you were assholes. But, like, because of, you know, high school hi- hierarchy, that's just how it works. But there was way more of us, the, you know, the goths and the emos and the weird art kids and, like, you know, the chavs and whatever who all kind of like just banded together. There was like a ton of us and we all kind of like were mates or like at least, you know, kind of shared social circles, um, you know, as opposed to this sort of you know popular group that was maybe about, I don't know, six, seven people. Um, and I think that that's like the same in most places where actually you have a lot more sort of, you know, geeks and freaks than you do kind of like, stereotypical like i'll say all american but because we don't really have the equivalent here in england but you know what i mean like the kind of quote-unquote normal sort of people i think there's i think deep down like we're all we're all a little weird sometimes (laughs) yeah and i and i think you know there are there's plenty of other uh movies and stories and all that stuff that will tell us you know oh those people are hiding their own you know foibles and fallacies yeah. and stuff like that and uh um yeah so yeah it, it, like that that sense of being different is weirdly universal <laughs> yeah that's the irony isn't it yeah you know yeah. that that we all feel like we're these uh sort of special snowflakes <laughs> <laughs> drifting through the universe feeling things that no one has ever felt before <laughs> and yeah and the reality is we're we're all kind of largely the same and and want the same things mostly yeah yeah definitely um you know just just want to be loved yeah 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 and, and you know for this christmas season what what is better than uh that that yeah. that idea that you know, everybody just wants to be loved, and if you got a little extra to spare, then you know, share it around. Yeah, hundred percent. Do is do is what Peg would do. Oh boy, yeah. If if you if you take nothing else away from this conversation, it's that one Edward Scissorhands had a tough time using the <laughs> toilet, 
<laughs> and two, that you should have as much love and kindness in your heart as Peg Bog. Yeah, I'll try to. Yeah. Uh, hey, you want you want a story from a listener? Yeah, I do. All right. So here's one from Jim, and he says, uh, th- "This was a first date." That was arranged by some friends who were sure that uh, he and and this lady in question would hit it off. Right. And he says, after much organizing, it was eventually decided that they'd go to the cinema, then out for drinks. So, okay. which makes it sound like it was an ordeal to get everybody coordinated. Yeah. And so he says they were going to go see The Sixth Sense. Okay, cool. But he wasn't crazy about that because he'd already seen it. Right. But he was like, all right, fine. We'll, we'll go see The Sixth Sense, but I know what's up. <laughs> yeah. And then, during the movie, he discovers that she's a movie talker. Oh, no. And the way he puts it is, she asked about 100 questions about the movie in the first 10 minutes. Who is that? <laughs> what are they doing? Oh, I know him from something else. That kind of thing. Uh-huh. Then, starts trying to guess the twist. Oh, no. And he says, about half an hour in, half an hour in, I had had enough. Told her I was going home, and then spoiled the end for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Which is a real dick move, but also, I, I was hoping so much that that's what happened. <laughs> it's all right. So I, I think we're, we're in the spirit of, uh, you know you know devil's advocating the uh the other side of the argument from everyone should have the kind of love in their heart that peg bog does <laughs> i can be fucking petty oh yeah and uh-huh. there is nothing worse than a movie talker when you're on a date oh my god yeah i hate it and and but my move is like hey you know as much as i do but jim didn't even have that out well, no, yeah, exactly, because he did know. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I, the most that you'll get from me is if it's someone who I'm really excited about because it's been, a, they've been either Buffy, Angel, or Supernatural, I'm like, ah, oh, it's and it, like, <laughs> no one else cares. No one else knows. I'll tell it, I'll still <laughs> say it, even though you don't know who this person is or watch this show remotely. I'm like, oh, it's such and such from, like, Supernatural. And Michael's just like, I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> shut up. Um, and I'm like, okay, yeah, no, right, right, right. And then I'll like have a like a, a little kind of to myself, you know, like a little burst of excitement to myself. That's the most you'll get out of me. Um, like once I'm in the cinema, though, generally, like I'm just I'm like switched. I switch everything off around me. Like I am just in this film. Do you know what? Actually, recently, um, so I work in a cinema. I can't say which cinema because I'll get in trouble. Um, but I work in a cinema, and we just had the Spider Man release. And it was day of opening and we were sold out. It was the busiest uh, day that they have had since opening. Um, like not just since, like since the, the actual branch opened, it was their busiest day ever. And um, we didn't get to do some of the normal checks that we would normally do, like bathroom checks, until basically everyone had gone in for the final screening. And then so whoever's duty that was went round to just make sure that there was like, you know, still loo roll available and nothing too terrible on the floor. Um, And some prick had written out this huge spoiler in permanent marker. Oh, wow. Yeah. On the wall. And like, we were just like, the fuck, like, um, you know, like a bunch of us had had seen it already earlier in the day. This was the this was the night shift. Um, but what was so just like so so aggravating was not even the fact that they'd done it. Although that was enough, it was the fact that people don't walk around with permanent markers on them. They had planned it. They had come in knowing that that's what they were going to do. Um, and we couldn't. I don't think. Well, I don't know if they have since got it off or whether we've just had to cover it up with something. But like, I know it's a struggle to get it off at least last night. So yeah, I, I mean, I wasn't in today to know like what happened with that. But we were just all of us raging because like this is one of the most anticipated films of the year, yeah. and like for a lot of people, this is the first time they've 
come to the cinema since lockdown and everything. Um, and then can you imagine just all you want to do is, oh, I'm just going to take a quick piss before I go in. <sighs> you yeah. gotta be a special kind of asshole. Such a cunt. Yeah. That's like, something special. That's awful. However, what Jim did was justified, I feel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a time when I did, like, I dropped a bomb on the way out of a date like that i've definitely <laughs> i've definitely gotten out of dates and thought well that's the last time i'm ever going to talk to that person yeah um one quick story go go for it so uh there was uh for, and if i've told this one let me know because you know the mind is feeble at this point but this was <laughs> back in my college days when i was bartending and there was uh my shift started about 4 p.m and mm -hmm. there was a girl uh that would come in about the same time and every day she would order uh, like two martinis not at the same time but you know a martini <laughs> and then another martini right and i hey, no I, judgments <laughs> right and while, while i was setting up the bar because i had just gotten there and i'm you know setting it up for that night and i would throw jeopardy on Right. And so for a couple of weeks, she was kind of my Jeopardy buddy. Oh, that's cool. Right. And I was like, well, this is all right. Like she, and she's clearly not stupid because I've seen her play Jeopardy. <laughs> that's <laughs> Which, the test. That's the test right there. Yeah. Right. Screw SATs. Just shove them in front of Jeopardy for half an hour. Yeah. And she was pretty good. And I, I assumed that it wasn't a Groundhog Day situation because it was multiple <laughs> days. <laughs> yeah. And unless she was having a groundhog week, in which case, well, maybe that explains some of the later behavior. Oh, uh, but so I asked her out and uh, she, her name was Salida, which I really liked. She, it was kind of a cool name. Yeah, it's a cool name. So I'm like, all right, cool name. She likes Jeopardy. And we were going to um, uh, see. I, I wanted, <laughs> That's your criteria. And look, I'm, I'm easy. <laughs> it, I think we were going to go see like, as you like it. Uh, something like that, that or Twelfth anything. Night, something like that. One of the comedies. Oh, uh, it's uh, oh no, I'm thinking Much Ado About Nothing. Like, ignore me. Sorry. It, I don't think it was Much Ado About Nothing, but it could have been. I want to say it was Twelfth Night, but I, right. I could be wrong. Anyway, so I go pick her up. We go to a bar that's near campus because that's where the play was. And we're going to yeah. have a couple of drinks. And it was like fucking Norm from Cheer showed up when I walk in with her. And, oh, right. and not for me. They didn't know oh. me from nothing. Oh, okay. This was for her. And I was like, hmm, that seems strange. So then we go to the uh, the play. At intermission, we're, we're chit-chatting outside. I know she's got a tattoo on her shoulder. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. It's kind of a tree of life thing. I was like, where'd you right. get that? Yeah, yeah. And she's like, oh, my boyfriend gave it to me with some piano wire. What? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, boy. Oh, this does not seem cool. And, oh, she crazy. Right. So we finish the play, go to another bar to to have a nightcap. And at this point, I'm like, eh, it still could be okay. I mean, there's definitely some red flags, but, eh, you know, let's let's not uh, jump to conclusions here. Uh -huh. And she gets fucked up in a way that was hard to believe. Just wow, okay. trashed. And you're a bartender at this point, so your like level of what you've seen is probably relatively high. Yeah. Oh, I've seen people fucked up, and this was the kind of thing where, like, when I was taking her home, and I didn't realize how drunk she had gotten until she was that drunk. Yeah. And so I'm taking her home, and I don't exactly remember the way back to her place, and she's passing out as I'm trying to get directions from her. Yeah. So Not then. Ideal. <laughs> so i finally get her back to her place and there's a guy and this is like 2 a.m by this point uh-huh and so there's a dude sitting on the porch not wearing a shirt <laughs> and i'm like okay oh boy um so i help her out of the car get her at least halfway between me and said half naked dude on the porch uh-huh and then she seems to have her feet under her, so I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. 
I get, and and knowing full well like this is the last time I am th- there is no date number two for after this like this was I mean a good story but <laughs> also not the kind of person I want to have a, a second date with I need to get out of here but I didn't like toss the grenade over my shoulder on the way out but about a week later she showed back up at the place where I was bartending yeah that's what I was wondering like what happens with this yeah and oh, Kate, what she says to me, she oh, says, God. hey, d- did we have a good time the other night? And I was like, ah, yeah, it was fun, you know, because I don't want to be a jerk. I'm just like, right. All right, you know, I'm just not going to ask her out a second time. And then she says, no, did we have a good time? Oh, right. And I was like, oh, no, 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 I that I would never. That is no, no, because she was insanely drunk and you are not a side character from a promising young woman. <laughs> right but in, in my mind that question meant it had happened before oh yeah and it, and that was the last time i ever saw her Ooh, was her yeah. just checking in to be like oh did we have sex and i was like no we did not so if you were pregnant <laughs> not me <laughs> not me maybe the shirtless guy on your porch i wasn't really sure what was going on there if that Ooh. was a relative or a neighbor not I sure had- I really, really hope that she was just genuinely wondering as opposed to, I had sex last night, and I'm hoping it's you. Right. Right. Because that is a whole kind of nasty. Yeah. I Look, whatever <laughs> the story was, I wanted no part of it. Yeah, 100% get that out was, of that. <laughs> that was a, a rough scene, but yeah, like yeah. I said, no, not exactly gym scenario, but it was definitely <laughs> a, like, oh, the, the, I... I there's something liberating though when you're about halfway through a date and you know that's going to be the only one where you're yeah. like oh I don't even have to front I can just be the the real asshole that I am <laughs> and if everything goes wrong then she says you know yeah. that we're never going to see each other again and that saves me from having to do it yeah you can skip straight to like sixth date Bo yeah you know and um, it's fine because you don't give a fuck <laughs> sixth date Bo <laughs> Like, I mean, that's where I get to it. Is that not? Is that not where you get to it? <laughs> where you just like, all right, pull my finger. <laughs> yeah, basically. Like I, oh god, yeah. On that note, I uh, so real quick. I first off, I've never had the situation like that. I have had the situation where I've had to get my friend to call me with an emergency, um, and <laughs> um, he didn't believe me at first. So I can fake cry. Um, so I did that and then he took me home and then I just never, I just completely ghosted him. Um, but uh, it was just, it wasn't his fault. It was just, well, basically it was, it was a Tinder date and he was definitely using his best photos. Um, so I was like, right, no, I only want you for one thing. So that's not working. Um, but there was uh yeah, so <laughs> I've told this story on Jaws is Shite, um, but, you know, I'm assuming that maybe there might be some different listeners here. Um, basically, when me and Michael, uh, my my partner, uh, first started dating, uh, I was... Have I told this story before? Uh, keep going. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. I didn't give you much information. Um, so we... And I was, like, on best behavior. Um, and, you know, like keeping all of my my bodily functions to myself um you know and given the illusion of being an actual barbie doll you know um except with all the working parts you know because that's important um and it was i don't know like uh, about a month or so into our relationship because by that point it we just sort of established like yeah this is just more than a shag um and yeah, and so I had been really good about, like, keeping everything in and just not letting him sort of, like, see behind the veil, so to speak. Um, and we're all, like, in bed, post- post-coitus kind of thing, like, all in that, you know, after shag glow. And they're all really romantic and everything. And I'm, like, talking away because, you know, of course. And um, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, I let one rip. And, and I try to, like, continue as though... <laughs> we both like you know that nothing happened we both know it it definitely did and I can't I like I it's just it was too bad like I just 
broke and I was like I'm so sorry it was that real like I don't even know why like I was so shamed by it but I think just because I'd had this like pretense that I'm like a real girl instead of this like bridge troll that I actually am um (laughs) and um (laughs) and uh yeah and so I was like oh my god like the illusion shattered and I'm so sorry and all of this and I'm like head in hands I'm not looking at him I'm completely mortified and like I eventually like look around peek through my fingers at him just to sort of like is he looking as horrified as he must surely be looking um after that and he's just sort of smiling and I'm just like what and he's like don't worry about it you've been farting in your sleep for weeks <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And i was just like oh that does not make it better <laughs> um but yeah like so um yeah i think probably more than six dates but in fairness i don't really know how to gauge our dating because our second date lasted four days so oh nice it was bank holiday weekend it was easter weekend so he just didn't leave the whole weekend that's great it was so great. <laughs> I don't really remember much from it, honestly, but um, it was, I remember it being good. Um, but yeah, so I don't really know how to gauge our dates, but yeah, like I reckon six is a healthy number before you sort of start letting out the crazy. Like they're emotionally invested by six dates, I think. It's less yeah. easy for them to like pull away. You certainly feel like, well, this is starting to become a regular thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe the level of crazy that this person was letting loose is maybe still at six days. You're maybe like, yeah, I'm still good to cut and run here. But um, I, I mean, you got to applaud her for her, like you know, being true to herself on on day one. That's you know. That's <laughs> I cool. think that's just called alcoholism. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, maybe let's not applaud that. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, how do you feel about doing some? Would you rather? to wrap oh, this up so, here so into that okay do you want to go first with one of yours yeah okay so the premise of this is that one of the would you rather's always has to be or scissors, scissors for, hands. for hands yeah okay so go with scissors say scissors for hands first and then and then do the other one okay okay yeah do it that um way. all right would you rather hold on where's my list okay would you rather have scissors for hands or you never learn how to read? Oh, fuck. Oh, you're an asshole. <laughs> oh, you did that on purpose? Nah, fuck off. I'd rather have scissors for hands. Because, right? yeah. Although, oh, God, I wouldn't ever be able to touch books. Uh-huh. Oh, well, you, uh, you just have to be careful. That you don't turn them into confetti. Are you ki- are you fucking kidding? I'm a mess. Like I can't I can fucking do anything. <laughs> like that would be fucking confetti. Um, yeah, I definitely prefer to have scissors for hands, but I guess I'd oh I'd have to uh, uh, I'd have to have a Kindle. Uh, uh. Yeah, but the Kindle's never going to respond to your touch. <sighs> yeah, no, I know. But I wouldn't be able to feel the paper anyway, would I? So. Mm-hmm. But I'd still be able to have the stories. I could do audiobooks. It's okay. You could also, like, if you found uh, your equivalent of a Kim, you could have them turn <sighs> pages for you. Yeah, they could just read to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely I'd rather have scissors for harems. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ass wiping and everything. I don't give a fuck. Like, you can't take reading away from me. Well, you've got the robots with buckets, so. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Silver linings and all that. Uh-huh okay cool right i got one all right okay well uh this one is it's kind of an obvious one but i feel it's good to get out of the way would you rather have scissors for hands or not have any sensation of touch oh okay yeah i mean it's got to be scissors for hands because right. it not being able to feel anything because that's one of those like weird conditions where you're like you don't realize you're on fire and stuff yeah and that's a thing though isn't it yeah 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 yeah. yeah. that's a real thing yeah yeah I, it's I, like I your sensory like things on the layer of your skin just don't, like you can still walk around and function and shit but you just can't really feel anything much yeah oh it's what fucking what's his face has in kick-ass oh yeah yeah, yeah. you're right yeah yeah <laughs> i don't know why that suddenly came to mind um but yeah cool all right yeah i think i'd be the same all right um would you rather have mm-hmm. scissors for hands <laughs> or every time you laugh 
a oh, bird God. dies. <gasps> oh, God, you were really hitting hard. Mine are just sort of like <laughs> ones where it's uh-huh. like, you're, you're really fucking going for the emotional shit. Wow. Um, I was not prepared. Um, ah, I mean, oh my God. Every time I laugh. Uh-huh. Every time I laugh. I, I laugh a lot. Oh God. I, but like I only live like, what, maybe, maybe 80 years. Would that be enough to put any birds extinct? I don't think you would make them extinct. And, and you're only killing one per laugh. Yeah. Okay. So, mm, so like if it's a laughing still, fit, does that still only count as one? Right, but that's still a lot of bird murder. Yeah, but I feel like no one would know it was me. Yeah, I think I'd rather have a bird die. <laughs> Every time I laughed. And you know now, for the, at least another week, every time I laugh, I'm going to be thinking about that. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, God. We wouldn't be able to do this show. I'm just... That's the caveat. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Because you make me laugh a hell of a lot, so... I, I, right. I mean, you, you would you would kill more birds in a neighborhood than, like, a, a feral cat. Yeah. <sighs> that's hard hitting. All right. I'll go on for you. All right. If you... Hang on. Wait. No. Would you rather have scissors for hands or... If you were to have scissors for hands, feel it every time you cut someone instead of that person feeling that cut. Oh, okay. So either way, I've got scissors for hands. It's, yeah. So it's, 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 it's just a question of who I hurt. Yeah. So would like basically a question of would you take the pain of somebody else no. over somebody else? <laughs> no, because I'm not going to go out like intentionally hurting anybody. Yeah, but neither did Edward. He was cutting everybody up right. without. Right, and it like. I, I, no, no. I, <laughs> and yes, the, I mean, is it a bit sociopathic? Maybe you be the judge. But no, I don't like. A, I don't want to. Like all of it would be accidental contact, and I don't feel like I would deserve it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Would you? You would go the other way, wouldn't you? No. Okay. Good. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> So I just wanted to see if you would. No, no, I like I uh, I'm I believe in kindness, but I don't believe in climbing up on a cross. I also as well feel like there are safeguards. Like just get some thick gloves. Yeah, right. You just put corks on the end of everything. <laughs> right, Edward. Seriously, I think what we've established so far is that you're really complaining over nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> baby. <laughs> All right, fucking wimp. All right, you got one more. <laughs> would you rather have scissors for hands? Or be fabulously wealthy, but you you never uh, you are never loved by anyone again. <gasps> so I'm, I'm Bill Gates, or more of uh, like Elon Musk. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I knew there was someone worse. I almost went with Trump, but I was like, nah, he's not rich anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have that much money. Low. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I do like to be loved. <laughs> All right. I like to be like I'm a bit of a people pleaser. Okay. All right. Scissor hands. But with a, a with a with a yeah, give a fuck attitude, obviously. Yeah. Um. All right. Cool. So <laughs> it's one for you. <laughs> 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 Would you rather? This is the level I'm going at. You're going at real fucking emotional shit. This is what I'm going for. <laughs> Would you rather have scissors for hands or? <laughs> <laughs> shoot bullets whenever you come oh wow huh <laughs> so it's just it's kind of hand jobs for life is what we're saying or just yeah or, you, or, can't, you can't even go on the tits um or blow jobs from the suicidal <laughs> yeah that's what they call a kamikaze or kamikaze right. a, a kamikaze, kamikaze. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is the the most goth of choices because you're like, I, if I if you make me too happy, I'll kill you. It's like the angel of sex. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Um, I is. I mean, I it's oh boy because <laughs> the scissor hands just limit your options so much anyway. But yeah, I think it's got to be scissor hands. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a pretty good one. So, really? would you would you rather have scissors for hands? Uh huh. Or once a day, whenever you're in the largest crowd, you blurt out one of your darkest secrets. Uh, are you kidding? That one because I do that fucking anyway. <laughs> That's what this fucking show is. Fair enough. Okay. All right. So finally, one not scissors for hands. Yeah. The, yeah. I'd rather just do that because yeah, I don't really have any any real secrets. I I'm incapable of keeping my own. <laughs> All right. Perfect. I can keep other people's secrets, but if it's anything, if it's mine, I'm like, oh my god, guys, guess what? <laughs> All right. Did I go first? Uh, yeah, you went first. Okay, so let's do one more one more round. So you do two more, I'll do one more if you got it. Okay, cool. All right, I've got right. one. Wait. Okay. All right, yeah. Oh, okay, I've got a nice rounding up one. All right. Wait, yeah, okay. So would you rather have scissors for hands or everyone that you know have scissors for hands and not you? Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, let's just end on this one. This is a good one. Okay. We'll both answer right. this one. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's what we've been doing anyway. But <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I would, I would do scissor, uh, scissors for hands for just me. Oh yeah. Yeah, because I would not want my loved ones to. Assuming I had any, but if <laughs> if I had loved ones, I would not want them to, you know, have the same curse. Yeah, I'm the same, but I'm kind of <laughs> a less selfless thing. I'm more like I don't, I don't want to risk pissing those people off. <laughs> I, i'm doing it out of benevolence you're doing it out of self-preservation basically yeah i saw this movie i can see how it turns right look at poor kevin <laughs> kevin's never gonna be the same right He's going through life with all these scars on his face uh-huh yeah bill uh, not bill fucking jim didn't make it out okay today so no. yeah kevin's gonna yeah. be like mickey rourke <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just get him a big leather trench coat. It'll be fine. He'll work it. Yeah, it's all uh, good. All right. Well, <sighs> I think that's gonna do it then. Uh, yeah. All right. First of all, this was a tremendous amount of fun. I, I yeah, hope, it was really good fun. I hope uh, you listeners at home uh, feel the the holiday spirit <laughs> coursing through you <laughs> after this conversation. <laughs> I think we mentioned a Christmas party and that was it. <laughs> it's, you know, it, we'll get any any Linux to say you put a little love in your heart at the end of this and right. it, it'll, it'll be officially a Christmas episode. <laughs> um, we'll just add some jingle bells in the background. That's what E17 did, so. Perfect. Do you know about that? No. Did this, oh, there's a, real quick, there's a uh, song called um, Stay Another Day and it's not anything to do with Christmas, but they shot a video in black and white with fake snow and they added some jingle bells and now it's a Christmas number one. <laughs> like, not now, but like 20, 30 years ago it was. Um, there's nothing to do with Christmas though, just added some jingle bells. Perfect. So yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Merry uh, Christmas. Done and done. Yeah, that's the, the editing takes care of itself. Uh, okay. all, right, all right. Before we, we wrap things up uh, officially... Where can people hear more of you? Because uh, this isn't the only place that you spill dark secrets. <laughs> it's not. Uh, so I really spill dark secrets sometimes on George's shite and other regrettable outbursts with uh, Duncan and uh, very, lots of uh, fucking Liam and Scott and Baz. Um, but I've actually had to kind of withdraw a little bit from that because I need to save it now for this show. <laughs> nice uh yeah um and then you can hear me on my actual own podcast um called eternal darkness of not so spotless minds um and you find that on all your usual places and it's just a um a podcast with me and my mate matt and we chat about um dark movies not just horror horror adjacent movies too um choosing an old one and a new one and uh chatting a lo load of shite basically um not load of shite about the movies but just we'll talk about good stuff about the movies but you know around that we'll talk a lot of shite but it's good fun shite so you know yeah it, he was on <laughs> uh friday nightmares with he was yeah scott he and christmas... heather it was a really fun show he's yeah it's really good yeah he's uh yeah he's doing that that was last friday so that's on there like christmas i was supposed to be on that but as it says in the episode i had to work so yeah i could not get out of it unfortunately but they've promised they've given me like an open invitation 
Well, so sure. that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, like a vampire, you can now show up whenever you want. <laughs> yeah, in my ultra goth way. <laughs> so, you don't understand the kind of love I have. <laughs> Bite. <laughs> Flounce. <laughs> 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 Swing my 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 dark trench coat, which I did have when I was fifteen. Oh, that is so uh, good. purely. It was like it is like a proper woolen one as well. And you know what? Actually, okay, real quick again, just real real quick because mm. I don't know if I'm going to get another chance to tell the story. <clears throat> this is the type of fucking shit that I have to kind of reconcile with myself. That it is just <laughs> the way that my head works. I had this. I had this trench coat. I'm hoping my parents don't listen to this. Um, especially my dad so my dad's dad my grandpa he died um, and um a few months before i had got this amazing like you know all the way down dramatic woolen trench coat black obviously and um when i found out my grandpa died a few months later the first thing that went through my head because it was november that he died was awesome i don't have to get him a christmas present Second thing was, ah, oh, shit, I'm not going to get anything from him. Oh, no. And, and the third thing was, I'm going to look kick-ass at the funeral. <laughs> um, because I'm a terrible person. In my defense, we weren't close at all. And he was a bit of a, bit of a grumpy old miserable git. But he was still <laughs> the blood of my blood. And I probably should have cared more. <laughs> I'll, I'll, all right. So to make you feel slightly better. <laughs> okay. When my dad died oh okay at his funeral his his mother my grandmother that's how mm -hmm. that works yep my grandma <laughs> sometimes i have to write it down <laughs> my, my grandmother was in a really weird southern baptist church right and the kind of place that like if you wear pants that's a sin that kind of stuff for women wow yeah okay super conservative Mm -hmm. but also very rural as well. Yeah. And so at my father's funeral, this trio played Amazing Grace on some instruments that they had made themselves and bore little resemblance to actual musical instruments played by <laughs> normal people. <laughs> and so at my father's funeral, I got the giggle so bad. That I had to like bury my face <laughs> into the the shoulder of my girlfriend at the time, and she was like, I I I know she thought I was crying at first until she That's... heard the like inhalation, <laughs> as I'm just absolutely losing my shit, no more than ten feet away from the coffin. That's amazing. It's always the best laughter when you are not supposed to laugh. Yeah. I always, so. whenever that happens, because you're trying to hold it in, I end up <laughs> I end up doing the thing where it just bursts out of you. But because you're trying to hold it in, you just snot everywhere yeah. <laughs> and like, and spit sprays because you can't hold it in anymore, but you're still trying uh, because that's the kind of person I am. <laughs> it was, oh, it was shocking. It was so funny. I mean, that's still so funny. Good. That's um, very funny. <laughs> yeah. My father may be dead, but the memory of the, those instruments is eternal. Oh uh, my god, that's so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with mine that was the same that was the same one whose um white shag rug carpet or whatever I I ruined with red wine and got high out. It was it was a mess. <laughs> um, I probably shouldn't have gone, honestly. Next month I grandfather I wanted, stories. <laughs> yeah, but I just wanted to look really good at the funeral, so it sounds like, you know, mission accomplished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> I'm also very short. I don't think I pull it off in the same way as David Boreanaz. <laughs> eh, you know, I think he's only like 5'5". Five five. <laughs> he's not. He's like six foot one. On an Apple box. <laughs> yeah, that's why they cast Sarah Michelle Gellar, because she's like five foot nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. That entire cast was <laughs> under 5'10". <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, got, they got special tax credits for, <laughs> for hiring little people. That's true. Oh my god, that's awesome. Hey, it's the 90s. All right, we'll oh see you god, next right, month, everybody. Done.
<laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>